As the rest of mankind emerges slowly from prehistory, the hidden people of Atlantis enjoy an already ancient civilization, rich in wonder and sophistication. Since the beginning of time, the moon goddess, Amu, has ruled over all things, attended by her consort, Sa'at, the sun god. Oh, shit! Oh, shut it, Plato. As far as we know, by any modern-day scientific means, you are pulling total shit out of your ass. Uh, yeah. When it comes to any fact-checking on the myth of Atlantis, you may as well just be chasing your tail. Still, I'm not completely sure the people of Atlantis flew flying winged boats. And it could be a bit of a stretch to say that Atlantis was a Mesopotamia before there was a Mesopotamia. But, you know, whatever. Suspension of disbelief, people. Just, just keep that shit high and out of reach on this glorious acid trip. As it is above, so it is below. Oh, fuck off, you Blair Witch ripoff number 5,009,560-something-in-something-and-whatever. Something whatever. From her palace on Atlantis, Queen Rhea rules over an island of peace and plenty, where the seasons come and go, yet time seems to stand still. Creon has been her consort for six years, and in accordance with custom, his position will be challenged a year from now. Seth, the hero of our tale, is traveling to the palace where he will join the select band of Queen's Companions. Although he doesn't know it, Seth is destined to face ancient mysteries and grave dangers, an adventure whose outcome may well decide the very fate of Atlantis. Looks like a pretty bullshit place to get off. Especially given the fact that they just passed by the docking bay for those flying ships. This is where I leave you. The companion's quarters are easy to find. Go in Amu's life. Yeah, 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 whatever. Stop trying to milk it. You're not getting tipped. Farewell, my noble steed. I'm sure I won't see someone else in this game who will look exactly like you because, you know, it's not like, you know, the developers just copy and paste character designs and whatnot. Anyway, bye-bye. I see you're going. Bye-bye. 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 Why? Okay. As far as intros go, that was pretty decent, I guess. Aside from, you know, the public transportation that, that ships Seth off from wherever he previously was before coming here. He should have used Uber. So we start out this game by going towards the guards in front of these steps, and we have a quick chat with him. Are you a companion? No, boy. We're members of His Highness the Consort's Honor Guard. Who are you calling, boy? I'm a man! Is this the way to the companion's quarters? Go up the steps and ask the guards near the pool. <laughs> Fine. Maybe I will. Just don't call me boy. So we meet up with those guards, and these guys don't seem to be the nicest bunch. Can you tell me where the Companions' quarters are? You have business in the palace? I've been chosen for the Queen's Companions. Any proof of that? You know what? I'm gonna take a wild stab at this and say, you're gonna be one of the many troubles for me in this game. And, you know, either that or... You were just born with a condescending tone to your voice. Well, the only thing we have in our inventory is this thing. It looks like a badge. We show the badge to the guard here. Go up the steps and take the first door on the left. Damn straight, son! So we head on up to the palace grounds, and there's no door on the left. Damn, 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 straight, son! True, there is no door. 
There is, however, a flight of steps going up over to our left. Sure, why not? And I'm sure it's perfectly reasonable to just wander around the grounds in front of the White House, too. Well, at least there's some security around here. Unlike a certain crystal key game that I know of. Dirty dur 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 dur. Dirty dur. Dirty dur. Dirty dur 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 dur. You stupid crystal key game. You stupid. Whoa, man. This is so trippy, man. Everything is sideways, man. Yeah. Don't lean far too far, Seth. You have a billion better ways to die in this game than falling off a two-story building. And it's all in Seth MacFarlane's latest ass of a movie. A Million Ways to Die in Atlantis. What's with Atlantis? Every year, people die in Atlantis. Bad luck or poor judgment? Whatever the case. People die in Atlantis! People die in Atlantis! So, are we going to wander around aimlessly some more? Mm, sure does look like it. Eventually, we come across this door, and we enter it, seeing as how this is the only door in this entire building. Can I help you? I'm trying to get to the Companion's Quarters. I know now I'm not the only one who thinks that info from the guard was a little misleading. You just found them. Are you looking for somebody? Not especially. I've been selected to serve as a companion. My name's Seth. Welcome, Seth. I will be with you. I'm Agatha. Oh, thank God. I'm sure she'll be quite a bit of help for us, especially seeing as how I, I really, really do not like starting new jobs. But I'm sure Seth, you know, won't have one of those awkward first days. How long have you been a companion? Oh no! Feeling awkward! Why can't I ever make a good first impression? Oh dear, lovely Anne. If only I could prove to you that I am more of a man than my penis size will ever lead on! Her Majesty's missing! Missing? What do you mean, last night? <laughs> His name is Lancelot. Her name is Anne Agatha. Mm, I'm sensing pattern here of not very creative character naming here. Then again, in order for me to call bullshit on this, Atlantis will have to do better than Schism Mysterious Journey, naming a thick ascended German dude an English sounding name. The others don't know yet. Please, you mustn't trust anyone, especially not your father. Dr. Hovis is telling you. Oh, yes! I so completely believe this guy's name is Dr. Richard Hovis. And I am a talking English muffin. Bleh! Oh, uh, yeah. We, we have a missing queen, don't we? Whatever happened to her, anyway? She was on the coast road with some companions, and they were attacked. Um, who attacked them? Nobody knows yet. All the companions with her were killed. Joris? Mena? Kino? All dead. And the queen? Gone. The consort's men are investigating, and all queen's companions are requested not to interfere. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Oh, man. This sounds pretty heavy, man. Something tells me we're gonna be out of a job before we even start it. So, that Lancelot dude leaves. And after that, we... You around here, eh? Give me some wine. Did my ass just... 
fly all this way just to serve you, pisshead? This would be one hell of a dumbass game if that was your actual objective here. Which, oh, by the way, it's not. It's not! No! I gave you an order, boy. Bitch, please! But the only thing you can't steal was came out to play. Stay out my way, mother. First we gonna rock, then we gonna fall. Then we let it pop, don't let it go. What? X go give it to ya, he go give it to ya. X go give it to ya, he go give it to ya. First we gonna rock, then we gonna fall. Then we let I think somebody's cruising for a bruising. Get your own wine, friend. You don't know who you're talking to, boy. Is that supposed to make a difference? Why don't you get out, Mel Vance? I'll remember you. I'm going. Just remember the consort's orders. Stay out of the investigation. Is it just me, or this this Mel Vance character just gonna be a little bitch all throughout this whole thing? You were right to stand up to that bully, Seth. That Mel Vance is a punk ass. Okay, I'm so worked up now. I think Seth is too. Why should the consort's men investigate the Queen's disappearance? We're Her Majesty's companions. We have a duty to do something. You're right, Seth. One of us should go to the scene of the attack and find out what happened. Who'll go? Why not you? You handled that bully Meljance, and it was your idea we should do something. Will you do it? Oh, dear lovely Anne. I will do anything for you. Can I marry you? Or are we moving too quickly in this relationship? Yes, I'll go. Where exactly did the attack take place? I don't know. She was touring the whole island. So it could have happened anywhere. You'll have to find that out. Go now, Seth. I will be with you. And so with that, we set off on our long and treacherous journey in search for our beloved queen. Once again, I have to reiterate how awesome the soundtrack for this game is. As of today, Microids holds the rights to Cryo's games. If Microids were to ever remake this game, they would do well to keep the original soundtrack. Or at least, you know, spruce it up just, just a very, very tiny bit. Not like this game needs a remake. I would prefer to keep the characters in this game looking like they have absolutely no emotion. So we walk out into the countryside along this trail, and we eventually come to an intersection of sorts. Up ahead is where Creon's men are. No doubt this was where the location of the attack took place. Then again, maybe they're shooting some kind of prehistoric era snuff film out here. Maybe we should make sure first. What are you doing here? And who are you? Tex Murphy, P.I. I just got sent back in time for some crazy, inane reason. And I need me a case to solve, buddy. I'm a Queen's Companion. Let me see your badge. Damn it, Seth! You, you know, if I just, if you just had me do the talking, you, you know, I would have slouched our way past these guards. Arrgh! Whatever. What? I don't care. So, whatever. Show them the damn badge. Didn't you hear? Companions keep their noses out of the investigation. Get back to where you came from or you'll be in trouble. Well, that went about as smooth as falling off a cliff. Thank you, Seth. The only other place left to go is back to the intersection and down the other path, which leads to a beachfront with a little shack to our left and a boat dock over to our right. On the dock is a fisherman. We, uh, go have a chat with him, since it is likely that he did see something. Pardon me, I'm trying to find out what happened to the Queen. Who are you, laddie? I'm Tex Murph. Seth, I'm a Queen's companion. Oh, God damn it, Seth! I'm investigating Her Majesty's disappearance. A Queen's companion, eh? I heard tell it was only the Consort's men who were investigating. That's true, but I am a companion. Disobeying orders. That's what you say, laddie. 
I've already been questioned by the soldiers. I can't help you. So once again, Seth has no people skills. I don't really either, so whatever. I get the sense, though, that the fisherman doesn't like the consort's men all too much. Me thinks he's a rebel. <laughs> Dude, fight the power, bruh. Fight that power. Fight it good. Fight that power, bruh. His Highness the Consort is determined to find out the truth. You must have noticed something. Like I told the soldiers, I don't know anything about it. The last resort we have is flashing that companion's badge to him. Either that or give him a good old-fashioned nougat on the head. So you are a companion. Those consort men have been pestering me with questions I wouldn't give them the time of day. But a loyal queen's man, that's different. Okay, this is, this is all well and good and all. How would this fisherman dude know, or how would anyone know for that matter, whether or not Seth just didn't pick this badge off the corpse of some random companion after they got killed? You know, assuming if Seth was anything other than what he actually is in the game. Come with me, lad. Ah, <sighs> oh well. Progress is progress. Y y you know, we can't complain about that. I was out fishing when it all happened, so I don't know anything about it. But before those guards on the road came along, I took a look at the place where the queen was attacked, and I found this. Looks like an earring. Hmm. Possible break in the case? Hmm. All I know is I'm not playing Sherlock Holmes and the secret of the seal of your earring. And thank heavens for that, because that's a point-and-click interface pulled straight out of Satan's asshole. What's your name? My name is Actian. I'm a fisherman. Well, okay. It's a better name than Lancelot, I suppose. Who would want to take Queen Rhea? Can't think of anyone. Maybe they came in boats from another land. Hmm, could be. But I didn't think there were any people who knew about Atlantis apart from the Atlanteans. And I didn't notice any strange boats. No, no, this doesn't look good to me. Eh, no, 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 no. His Highness the Consort might learn something from the earring. Maybe so. Then again, he might prefer not to. That's a strange thing to say. After all, he sent his men to investigate. You're probably right, laddie, but it's no secret that Creon listens to the priests of Sa'at. And they're not Rhea's most faithful subjects. Sa'at? Oh, wait, you're saying the word sir Ot. Oh, pardon me. I thought you were saying the word saw in past tense. The priests are not loyal? Not since they got their new high priest, Gimbas. And Her Majesty declared that Amu would always take precedence over Sa'at. The moon has always been queen of the sky, and the sun her consort. As sure as day follows night. But the priests would have it the other way around. You know, if only everyone in the world was atheist, then I'm sure people would find other excuses to act like shitheads. So now that we got the message that this Creon dude may be a little bit of a spoiled apple here, we head on back to the palace and tell Anne about our findings. Back here, everything seems to be just how we left it. That is, until we meet up with the guards by the pool. Well, if it isn't young Seth, the Companion's Hero. The Consort wants to see you. Creon? What for? What for, he says. Come on. Don't want to keep His Highness waiting. Hey, 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 hey. I wasn't the one who wrote Blow Me all over the palace walls, okay? That was probably Mel Jansen. He kind of wa I'm sure he kind of wanted it. You know, at least we can get a feel for that for this Creon guy. Not in the actual physical sense, mind you, but y you know, in in the more abstract sense. Sith, 
isn't it? And right off the bat, and I can tell this guy is a huge creep. Yes, Your Highness. Thanks to faithful Melgence here, I learned of your little escapade. I think you'll agree that in times of crisis, we need discipline. Mm? Oh my god, man! That voice! Dude! Where's your evil, twirly, cartoonish hipster mustache, Creon? Also, that punk-ass Mel Jams, he just had to come whining to Creon! He needs to let Creon's ball sack is what he needs to do! Well... Come, come. We can't have young hotheads disobeying every order they're given, can we? I've decided to overlook the incident, however, since your intentions were... Honorable. Please don't let it happen again. Now... Did your inquiries bear fruit? No, Your Highness. I discovered nothing. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, uh, that's a shame indeed. <laughs> you may return to the Companions' Quarters. And remember, orders are to be obeyed. <sighs> that was interesting. But at least we didn't lose our heads over it, because I'm sure at least one person back in there was in a head shopping kind of mood. So after that transaction, we retreat on back to the Companions Quarters to talk to Anne. Seth! I heard the guards took you to the throne room. His Highness told me to be a good boy. <gasps> Who's a good dog? Who's a good dog? You are Seth! You are! Who's a good doggy? Who's a good- What else did he say? Nothing much. Did you find anything? This earring. It's strange, but I have the feeling I've already seen one like it. I can't remember. It was a story somebody told me. Looks like my investigation ends here. Well, that was a short game. You're probably right. But I think you should try to find out about that earring. I think it may mean something. Well, of course it means something. Otherwise, we wouldn't have much of a game here, now would we? So we head on back out as we start our snooping. We decide to start by heading on out to the palace here and... Stop! We have orders not to let you out of the palace. Did you also take a part-time job as a professional cock blocker? <sighs> okay, so we can't leave the palace. Is there anything else we can do? Well, there are people to talk to. Like, uh, this girl who probably has cancer since she's balder than a hairless cat. She's found just standing around near the entrance to the throne room. But we find out pretty quickly that she's useless. As you then find out, she is but a lowly servant, and nobody tells people like her anything. Nobody tells us servants anything. I hope Her Majesty comes back to us soon. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. I, I'm gonna get away from you now. It's not the ball headed thing, it's just, you know, just... You're bald. Back over in a corner, near the steps leading down to the pool, we also find that Lancelot dude hanging out over here. The dude seemed to be a little wimpy back when we last heard him talk, but nothing like that punk-ass brute Mel Jance. So, of course, yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, we we go talk to him, why not? You're Lascoit, aren't you? Lascoit? Really? His name's not Lancelot? Ah, uh, yes, there, there is but one minor flaw in this game, and it's that sometimes the speech can be a little confused as to how to pronounce things. Much like how the fisherman kept saying sowed instead of sir ought. 
I'm, you know, if you're supposed to say sod instead of Sir Ott, then it's the narrator's fault, and she should be hanged for my confusion on how to pronounce the names of their gods properly. And you're Seth, the fearless investigator. I heard about your little escapade. Pity you didn't find out anything. I'm still working on it. You could get into trouble, my friend. You heard the orders. Lescourt, you may not know this yet, but you are talking to the human male equivalent to a honey badger. The orders are not to leave the palace. And asking a few innocent questions isn't exactly investigating. Well, you could be right. Some people think the consort wouldn't be all that unhappy if nobody investigated. But... <laughs> I wouldn't advise you to say that to Melgence. And Melgence is the human male equivalent to a cat pissing on your rug. Is Melgence a friend of yours? Why do you want to know? He seems to get on well with the consort. Well, he's never really liked being a companion. He'd rather be a guard. Mm, yes, that stand-up citizen would indeed fit perfectly as a condescending fuckhead in a red outfit. Agatha and Meljans don't like each other, do they? Well, that's uh, putting it a little mildly. Agatha's very attached to the companions. Meljans sees himself more as uh, a man of action. Hmm, is that like, I don't know, a rough translation for asshole? What chance does the consort have of finding the queen? Oh, wait. Presses, bro. When did that news first up, man? I, I never heard that. Mm, did you hear that? I didn't hear that. I, I, I didn't hear anything like that. I don't know. Somehow, I don't think the chances are too good. Why do you say that? Just uh, a feeling. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we will score is trying to seduce me. With knowledge, of course. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to him in just a moment, though. We need to talk to some other dude around here first before we get back to him. Back up on the upper walkway, leading to the door of the Companion's Quarters, we run into... this dude! Pardon me. You're the new Companion. Seth, what's your name? I'm Garcelos. You wanted to ask me something? Yeah! Actually, uh, what happened to your voice box? It sounds like you were nearly choked to death while sucking on helium. To be honest, though, I do kind of sound that way myself. I just met Lascoit. What about him? Are he and Meljans friends? Uh, why wouldn't they be? We're all friends here, Seth. I think the consort will find her majesty? The rumor is uh, she was taken by savages. Who knows where she is? Savages? What do you mean? Primitives from some other land. Somehow they learn about us and they... But I thought we checked on their progress. I never heard of any primitives advanced enough to find Atlantis. Maybe a boatload of them just got here by chance. Some of them traveled by sea, after all. Oh my god! You are blowing so much shit out of your ass right now, Garcelos. I swear to God. I can smell it from here. I really can. I really can. Oh my... Yes, I know, but you think they just happened to arrive when the Queen was passing by? And they recognized her? And decided to steal her? Look, I'm just telling you the rumor I heard. And anyway, who else could it be? You know, I really hate to sound like the straw man in the room, but... Perish the thought that it could be Atlanteans who are trying to overthrow their own rulers. <laughs> I mean, come on. In your world, Garcelos, the Bolsheviks and the Nazis would have just been on their time of the month. And I'm sure, I'm totally sure, Caesar Chavez, Napoleon Bonaparte, Genghis Khan, Mao Zedong, they would have just all been on their period too. Do you know Agatha well? Agatha? 
She's the senior companion. She seems very loyal to Queen Rhea. Nobody more loyal than Agatha. She's a faithful follower of Amu. And a damn fine woman that Moon Goddess is. Also, Anne. She, she's, she's, pretty, she's pretty good, too. Is Mel Jans a friend of yours? We get on all right. Agatha doesn't like him, though. Why not? Well, his parents and grandparents were companions, so he had to follow tradition. But he can't wait to finish his service and join the consort's men. He prefers Sa'at to the goddess. What? He prefers Sa'at to the goddess. Say again? He prefers Sa'at to the goddess. To the... Gabbit? To the Gabbe? To the Gabbis? He prefers Sa'at to the Goddess. I can't understand you! What the fuck are you saying? He prefers Sa'at to the Goddess. I can't... Oh my god, I can't understand you. Oh my god... Oh my... Oh my god... I can't... I can't understand you. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? I... What... I got the impression he also prefers the consort to Her Majesty. I wouldn't know about that. Okay, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. He is pissing me off with his gabbe talk. The fuck with this shit. So, with no one else around to talk to, we go back to the dude whose name is not Lancelot. Okay, yeah, he is kind of wimpy, but, you know, I'm sure we can trust this guy. Just as long as he does not say Gabby, we'll be just fine. So we start out by showing him the earring the fisherman gave us. Have you ever seen an earring like this? You're full of surprises. As a matter of fact, I have. Where? Who was wearing it? Oh, I don't know if I ought to tell you. It's a taboo subject. I could be taking a risk by talking about it, especially to a loyal Queen's companion. Oh my god, man, this guy, man, he is a total wimp. Look, I'm not going to tell the consort about it. Now tell me. All right. During the time of the last consort, a secret group was uncovered, consort's men and priests of Sa'at. They call themselves the Sons of the Golden Ray. They wore earrings like the one you have. What did they do? They worshipped only the Sun God. Only Sa'at? And what of Amu? They claimed Amu had usurped Sa'at's power, that Sa'at was the only true God. But the Queen, she is the living symbol of the Goddess. Exactly. The Sons of the Golden Ray believed it was time to replace the Queen. Atlantis would in future have a king. That was the will of Sa'at. Luckily, they were stopped. <laughs> well, what do you know? Turns out, our assumptions of the Atlanteans wanting to overthrow their own rulers ah, was right after all. <laughs> then again, eh, this has been kind of a dead giveaway for quite some time. This Lescort dude seems like a good pony to bet on. Clearly, he'll help us out in finding the Queen. I've got to find Queen Rhea. Listen, Seth. There's a handful of us who've suspected the Sons of the Golden Ray were plotting once again. Will you join us? I'm warning you, it could be very dangerous. Hells to the yes, bro! We're totally getting in on this shite! Why wouldn't we? I Yes, I'll join you. Good. We're meeting in half an hour at the Scarlet Cockerel. It's a drinking house? In the village, beside the palace? I don't think the guards will let me out. Hmm. It's true, you haven't made too many friends around here. Take this. There's a secret way out of the palace, which leads directly to the village. A secret way? Where? First, I'll have to get you past the guard round the corner. The rest is going to be your little test, Seth. Get through the secret passage, 
and we'll know you're smart enough. I'll tell you this much. Feed the monarch when the daylight over Atlantis has vanquished darkness. Tell me when you're ready to go. Okay, okay, no, no, like hell, I'm being stuck here. One more minute, this freaking palace, I hate it here, it's really soggy, the room service sucks, I hate this place. Let's go, Lancelot, let's get on your little pony, let's fucking prance out of here, bitch, come on, let's go, let's go. I'll distract the guard. Wait a few seconds, then follow me and slip through the door. And so he disappears off around the corner, and we wait a few seconds. No, better wait a few seconds. Okay, we wait a few more seconds. Then we get into place and sneak up to the door. Lescourt has the guard's attention, and he is in the middle of talking to him about... So I said, try it. And did he? What do you think? <laughs> I'm guessing it had something to do with consuming something that gets you really, 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 really drunk, or consuming something that isn't that consumable to begin with. Either way, I, I think I missed a pretty hilarious story. But sadly, there's no time to hear about Lancelot's asshole friends getting shit-faced. I have me a queen to save, gosh darn it. Now, we're getting into some pretty interesting stuff here. Like a party where you can get shit-faced on 100% proof vodka plus masculine. Now that's a party I would attend. Move forward immediately as soon as you get inside. There's an area to the right where there's a guard, but you don't want him to see you. Otherwise, it's most likely he'll impale us with those erect guard poles of theirs. The guards can be heard walking back and forth through a hallway, but we need to get past him somehow. As soon as we hear the guard's footsteps beginning to fade away as he heads back into the hallway, we make our move, and we discover a staircase directly to our left. We hightail it up those steps before you could say the word hazing. Congratulations! We made it to a room of some kind. Yeah, okay, I'm not... Uh, at all sure if this is the room where the secret passage is, but we don't have much in the way of room choices right now, now do we? We see a statue of a lion standing in the middle of this room. Over here is a model of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. We walk around the model and we discover the controls that move these celestial bodies. Somehow ties into what Lescourt said earlier. What was it he said again? I'll tell you this much. Feed the monarch when the daylight over Atlantis has vanquished darkness. Uh, right. This has always sounded a little bit confusing to me. If daylight is over Atlantis, it would be a pretty safe bet to assume that darkness would indeed be vanquished anyway, regardless of the sun's position in the sky. Y you know, it's this thing called night and day, people. I, I know, look it up. However, if Lescourt said that the sun is still, by all technical accounts, over Atlantis, then that can either mean an incredibly gloomy day on Atlantis, or something relating to Pink Floyd, or turn around something something every now and then I something something, I don't know, some cheesy love song from the early 1980s, bleh. The problem I used to have with this puzzle has always been what Lescourt's clue was really alluding to. It seems, though, that you have to trade in a synonym for the word vanquish. And that synonym is the word encompass. When we picture an eclipse in our minds, we don't tend to think of the moon completely shielding up the rays of the sun. 
Rather, we picture the moon fitting within the rays of the sun, and the moon itself turning to darkness. Thus, the daylight encompasses darkness. Blah! I'm sorry, Lascourt, but this lion does not look like a butterfly. It doesn't look like a middle-aged dude in a butterfly costume either. But it's the only thing around here that has an open mouth. So, why not give him some lamb? So we go into the passage, and we find ourselves in a darkened hallway. Down to our left, the hallway stops at some picture of a cat. No doubt, this was the closest thing. Our ancient ancestors had the cat videos on YouTube, but uh, we're, we're not going to indulge ourselves in any funny cat business right now. Uh, directly in front of us is a locked door. Curiously, we use the earring to open the door. Keep in mind that this earring came from the Sons of the Golden Ray dudes. So, does that mean that the room on the other side here used to be used primarily by these guys? If these guys were into chaining people up in the creepy dark dungeons, then yeah, I'd say so. I don't know. This could be a cause for concern, people. Uh, the, the, the sons of the Golden Ray, you know, they may have some ties to some serious higher-ups. If they have a dungeon in the palace that continues to be well lit by torches. Ah, uh, whatever. I don't care. I, I, if this was a cause for concern, you know, I'm sure the score would have ratted my ass out a long time ago. Yeah, uh, you know, or more specifically, right around the time. I showed him that earring. Uh, you know, despite that being such a taboo subject. Okay, we, we really should get out of here. Dungeons are not my thing. Not unless there's dragons involved or a man named Jeremy Irons hamming it up more than an actual slice of ham. Or about several tons of sliced ham for that matter. There's an open window right over here and we jump right out of said window. Despite there being some pretty pointy spikes that are kinda in our way. Also, I'm sure that was a pretty heavy drop. I guess I was wrong about you, Seth. You can jump off a two-story ledge and not kill yourself after all. God bless those cat-like abilities of yours, dear, dear good sir. And so at last, we arrive here in this village. The next thing we need to do is find a drinking house called... Uh, uh, what was it called, the Scorts? We're meeting in half an hour at the Scarlet Cockerel. Scholar Cockerel? Sounds like a very flamboyant name for a bar. This place better not also serve as like a dingy looking bathhouse or something like that. Or I am calling this game quits right now. I appreciate the flattery, Lascourt, but I do not, I do not, I, I do not swing that way. I really don't. I really don't. I don't. So we make our way around this place until we arrive at the back of a building with a staircase. Down this alleyway is a dude chilling out on a bench. We go and have a talk with him. Pardon me, I'm looking for the Scarlet Cockerel. It's, uh, you can't miss it. It's the building with the red rooster over the door. Uh, nah, uh, mm, uh, pardon me, sir? I do believe the building is called the Scholar Cockroach. Clearly, the rooster is a cock. I don't know. My, my spidey senses are tingling. 
something. Something tells me that I'm going to be walking into a trap of some kind. And I don't just think that because there's a cock involved. We scope out the place by going up the steps and out along the walkway. In the alleyway between this building and the next building over, we see a suspicious looking character walking about. I'm gonna wager this dude is a member of that Snobs of the Golden Ray Club. And even if he's not, I'll just explain to him afterwards that I, I was really, really shit-faced drunk back when I accidentally knocked him out with a flower pot. Now, as for this flower pot drop, you gotta time it just right. Right when he's directly under you. And make sure your field of view is vertically aligned with the wooden railing in front of you. Otherwise, the flower pot will miss. And the bastard will throw a knife at you. And his aim is pretty good. So, you know, just, you know, just don't mess it up. Hardly knew ye. Well, okay, not yet. Anyway, actually, we will actually meet this guy later on in the game. And oh my god, that is going to be a meeting of sheer awesome stupidity. I am telling you now. Before approaching the building next door, go down to the dude you just knocked out and get his knife. Believe you me, you are going to need it. Now we approach the building. Up above is a giant mosaic of a rooster. No doubt this is the bathhouse. Drinking house, yeah. So we go in and we're greeted by our friend, the Scorts, and that dude Garcilos, aka Mr. Gabby. And suspenseful music starts to play. Seth, you found the secret passage. I'm proud of you. Come and sit down. mean good. Sad to say though, I think we've run out of time here on the good old walkthrough review. Coming up on the next episode, we learn the all-important lesson that all men are filthy, filthy pigs, particularly overweight men wearing nothing but cod pieces for a living. We learn that in every society, it is always important to have your very own Charlie Day at hand. God bless you, Charlie Day. And, last but not least, trusting anyone whose name sounds like a serial murderer's nickname is perhaps not the best way to go through life, especially if their voices are changed for no reason other than wanting to sound as batshit crazy as Creon. Until then, party people, this is RBZ. 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 I think that's me. I, I mean, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna point and click on out of here right now. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use some tank controls. I'm gonna tank control my way out of here. Tank control my way out of this room.